Now that we all know which 12 contestants the judges selected as semi-finalists, I'm sure you'd like to meet each one of them. So I'm going to have a chat with them, one by one, and at the end of each conversation, you at home will see the composite score the judges give that contestant for this interview segment of the competition. Now remember, what they're judging is each contestant's personality, not the content of the interview. Miss California, will you step over here and we'll have a little private chat before about 60 million people. Only 60 million, huh? That little outburst of applause would indicate that they think that uh, you are uh, in the right place among our 12 semifinalists. You're Linda Fogarty, 19, of Fullerton. Yes. And you were attending Fullerton Community College, but mm -hmm. you left school during the last semester. Why did you do that? I left school because I was offered an opportunity to go to Asia, doing a promotional tour for Pan Am. What have you done as Miss California? Well, as Miss California, I've attended many, many oh, interviews and all kinds of evening press parties. I was in Hong Kong doing promotional work, and I met all kinds of people, and I'm having a fantastic time. That's good. Now, are you going to continue your education? Oh, definitely. What do you want to do? I'd like to study psychodrama. I think that would be fine. Now, what will you do uh, with a degree in psychodrama? Uh, with a degree in psychodrama, I will work with autistic children. Good for you. Now, I'd like to ask you something really serious. Okay. Do you like grits? Oh, I just tried grits for the first time this morning. I was very hesitant about trying them, and I like them. They're very good. I like grits. I really do. Of course, I'll say anything to get applause. <laughs> no, I do. In fact, at the hotel, they're going to send a suitcase full of grits home with me. I've eaten so much. Thank you, Miss California. Thank you. Now, watch your television screens. You'll see her composite score. Now that we have seen it, we are ready to talk with Miss Massachusetts. Would you come out here to me? Monica Magnus. She's from Boston. She's a graduate of Emerson College, and many of the girls in the pageant aspire to be models. But Monica here has worked as a professional model in Paris, probably the fashion capital of the world. Monica, what uh, houses did you work for in Paris? Oh, I worked for Saint Laurent, for Givenchy, for Christian Ojar, and a few others. Now, these girls, as I say, are many of them are interested in becoming models. What is the life of a model really like? Just describe it. Well, Bob, it's a lot difficult than people expect. First of all, it's, it is a nine-to-five job. You have to be up very early in the morning, making rounds, seeing people, and you have to keep in touch with people, Bob. You have to constantly update your portfolio and always be on your guard. Be the best that you can be at all times. Well, that's good in anything. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, you have also worked in the daycare center. Yes, I have, and that was one of one of the most rewarding jobs I've ever had. I had one student uh, named Keith. He would give me a hard time every day, Bob, and I'd go home and try to figure out what I was doing wrong. One day his mother said to me, you know, my little boy has a crush on you. And that really made me feel good because I tried to show all of my students that I love them very much. He liked you, so he's trying to get your attention by misbehaving. Would you like to say something to Keith? He may be watching there at home. Hi, Keith, I love you. <laughs> and she's glad you're at home and not here. <laughs> Probably not if you like him that much. I'll say something to Keith. Keith, immediately after the show, we want you to go to bed. Thank you, Miss Massachusetts. Thank you. Have a look at her score. And we have seen it, and we want to talk with Miss Arizona. Miss Arizona is Anna Marie Rubert. She's 21. She lives in Scottsdale. She is attending the University of Arizona. And what are you studying? I'm an English major and a finance minor. And what would you like to do someday? Someday, soon I hope, I hope to go into broadcasting. Oh, really? Yes. That's why you're studying finance. <laughs> you think that we make so much money doing this that you are going to need a finance degree to invest in. Is that it? I wanted to cover a lot of ground. <laughs> well, if you uh, go into broadcasting, what do you want to do? Well, I'd like to go into newscasting or um, some kind of commentating. I'm going to allow you to become a CBS correspondent. You are here on the Gulf Coast. Out yonder is Scottsdale. Tell the folks what's happening on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. 
Well, being from Arizona, of course, it's a real experience for me to be here on the Gulf Coast. No, Coast. no, I want to report. Oh. I don't want to, you cannot no personalize on okay. CBS News. Okay. Um, as you say, it's the beauty capital of the world here right now. We have a pageant going on. There's a lot of pressure going on here, and a lot of anxiety is built up to a great degree, and we're going to see in a few hours just how this all turns out. Look out, Walter Cronkite. Here she comes. <laughs> Thank you, Lady. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And we will see her score and go on and talk with Miss Washington, who is Tracy Goddard, 19, of Seattle, a student at Edmonds Community College. And what are your career aims, Tracy? Well, I have about two or three career aims. First, I would like to go into fashion. I have considered modeling and other areas. I want to decide first and try out each of them before I would pursue it. And also, which isn't exactly a career ambition, but one of my greatest ambitions is to go to Spain and to learn about the people there because I have studied Spain and its history. Oh, you have? Yes. Do you speak Spanish? Si. <laughs> Would you like to show off some Spanish? Uh, how do you like the Gulf Coast? Oh, me gusto mucho. Si? Uh, how do you like Southern hospitality? Me gusto mucho. <laughs> how do you like Southern gentlemen? Ah, oh, mucho me gusta. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Washington. You speak Spanish fluently. Me gusta mucho means that she likes you a lot, in case you don't speak Spanish. But if you don't speak Spanish at all, I could help you more. Taco, burrito, there are a lot of things. Miss New York, would you come over here to me? Mary Therese Friel is 20. She lives in Rochester. She is a student at St. John Fisher College. And you have heard, perhaps, in interviews or you've read, that the pageant is an educational experience for the girls. It was the pageant that made it possible for Miss New York to visit New York City for the first time, was it not? Yes, it was. I'm sometimes embarrassed to say that because usually when you say you live in New York, everybody thinks of the Big Apple. But the biggest thrill I've had so far, besides being in Mississippi, is experience New York City firsthand. And we got to go to a Broadway show, and we got to be picked up by uh, uh, King Kong at the Empire State Building. It was a press man dressed you up in a You went to a, base, a baseball game. And a baseball game with the Mets and Yankees played for the Mayor's Cup. Do you know how I know that? Yes. I saw your picture on the bulletin board with one of the New York Mets. Yeah, that was Which, Lee Mazzilli. Yeah, yeah. Has uh, he asked you out? Has romance blossomed? Well, I've been a little too busy for it, but he has called a couple of times and wished me good luck. Is, is he and are the Mets watching the ball game, to, or watching the uh, pass? <laughs> yes, where's the ball game? Where is the ball game? Which monitor is it on? Are the Mets watching the pageant? Well, he said that they would be playing tonight, but they would be putting it on Betamax. I hope they get a chance to see it. You know, the way the Mets have been going, they could watch the pageant and play just about as well as they've been playing. Um, I shouldn't say that. You know what'll happen? They'll go on, they'll win the pennant, they'll get in the series, and I won't be able to get tickets. I apologize. I apologize. Thank you, Miss New York. Have a look at Miss New York's score. And we're ready for Miss Illinois, who is Debbie Nigo, 20 years old, from Oak Lawn. And how about it, Miss Illinois? Was your family excited about you winning the title, Miss Illinois? They sure were. And you know, my, I have a little brother who's in fourth grade. His name is Ronnie, and he's here tonight. And he's probably going to crawl under the seat when I tell you this. But the week after I won my state pageant, we found out that he had been telling his teacher at school that he was going on appearances with me and he was out late at night with my parents and I and that he just could not get to his homework. You know, he was just out too late. <laughs> <laughs> and he was getting away with it. <laughs> if, if you become Miss USA, he may have to lay out for a whole year. <laughs> uh, he'd love that. <laughs> There is a, uh, a Miss Illinois of uh, 76, is that right? Who That's was a, right. a friend of yours? Yes, Kathy Schmelin. She's a, one of my best friends. She was Miss Illinois in 1976, and we're from the same town. We went to school together, and she's here tonight. She surprised me by, by coming in on Saturday night. Did she give you any advice as to what you should do if you became a semifinalist? <laughs> yes, she did. You know, and she told me if I made the semifinals, yes, she did, that I should come up here and have a lot of fun with Bob Barker. <laughs> 
Did she, is that what she said? Word for word. <laughs> Come up and have a lot of fun with Bob Barker. I think that's marvelous advice for any pretty girl in the country. Have fun with Bob Barker. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much, Miss Illinois. Let's see what the judges have for Miss Illinois. Very well. Those are the first six of our semifinalists. One of them just might become Miss USA tonight.